Hi everybody, I'm Jess, I'm a learning officer from the International Bomb and Command Centre and I would like to welcome you to the very first of my quarantine kitchen crafts. Um, so today we're going to be making the Ide Bunting. Much like this bunting you can see behind me, it's really super simple and you don't need very many materials at all to make this. But firstly, I was wondering, do we all know what B day is? So, I can't hear you, but I'm gonna guess that most of you, most of you have heard of B day before, right? So B E day, it stands for Victory in Europe Day. We celebrate it on the 8th of May every year. Um, because that was when, in 1945, the Nazi Germany officially surrendered and World War II was officially over in Europe. Now, I want you just to imagine very quickly that you were alive on the e day and you've just lived through six years of war. How do you think you'll be feeling? Yeah, absolutely. I think pretty happy, pretty excited, relieved. Anything else? Now, there was a lot of parties and celebrations um, to mark the day in 1945. And this year is really quite special because it's actually 75 years since World War II ended, since that day in 1945. And before the coronavirus epidemic, um, there was a lot of parties planned up and down the, the country for people to come together and celebrate our freedom. But we need to keep the NHS safe and we need to be social distancing and we need to save as many lives as possible. So all big parties have been postponed as far as I'm aware, for now. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a party to celebrate in your house. I know we're gonna have a party here this year. One of the most important parts of party planning is making sure you get the decorations right making sure you've set the right atmosphere for your bash. So that's where the bunting comes in. As I said, it's super easy. You don't need to do any sewing. Um, I made ours all from bits we had lying around the house really, because it's quite difficult to go outside at the moment and buy what you need. But I do think that's quite appropriate you know, rationing during the war um, meant that people weren't able just to go out and buy what they needed either. So they had to do a lot of improvisation and they had to make do a lot of the time with what they already had. And I imagine that's how bunting would have been made, or I know that's how bunting would have been made for the celebrations 75 years ago. So, all we need to make this bunting is some old fabric that you find right lying around the house. I've used many different things. This has come from a t-shirt, this is from a bed sheet, this is from some sort of man shirt, and you could use curtains, you could use old trousers, anything you have lying around. I've gone for a red, white and blue theme. Why do you think that is? Well, you're absolutely right for those who've got it. So red, white and blue are the colours of our Union Jack. The Union Jack is the flag of the United Kingdom. So to celebrate our country's efforts and our country's freedom and victory, I've used the same colours that appear on our flags. Now, 
you'll also need some string. That's what my flanks are on. So I've used three metres. That's a pretty good length for, for bunting, I think. It covers a good amount of, of, of space. Um, but you can use more or less bunting, oh, string, if you want. Now, I've tied my string up here just because I wanted to, it's easier for me to demonstrate how to, to uh, tie the flags in a minute like this. Now, first you need to cut your fabric into strips using scissors. If you ask your well, house adults, they might have some super sharp fabric scissors and then they might help you cut your fabric using them. If not, most scissors you find, well most scissors will cut fabric, you just need a bit more perseverance. So I've cut my fabric into strips about four centimetres wide and about 20 centimetres long. The longer your fabric is, the longer your flags will be on your bunching. I've got some examples here. This was quite a long strip of fabric. I mean, it's quite a long flag. This one was a shorter strip of fabric and it makes a shorter flag. It is completely up to you. Now, once you've cut all of your flags to the desired length, it's time to, to start tying them on your string. All you need to do is fold your flag in half. Can you see? The ends are down here and the top is a loop here. Now, this is why I've tied the string up so you guys can see better. Um, I don't think you'll need to do this at home unless you find that it works better for you as well. So, if you put your middle finger and your thumb inside the loop like this, can you see? And then hold your finger and your thumb just above the string that you're tying it onto. Then if you pick up the body or the rest of the flag and wrap it around the string, can you see it goes under and around the string? And then you pull the ends through the loop that you are holding with your finger and thumb. And then all you need to do is pull it tight and voila, you have a flag. So, I think personally, I think it looks better if they're evenly separated. I've left about a 15 centimetre ruler space between mine. You can tie them on however you want, well, whatever pattern you like of colours, um, or whatever distance apart you like, however you think they look the best. Make sure at either end of your string, you leave a little bit more because that's the end that you'll be tying onto things and you need more string to do that. So guys, happy making. I look forward to seeing your results and um, look out for the next kitchen craft. Bye.